Do you want to feel like your classical music connoisseur? Well, welcome! You found the right channel, and more precisely, you found the right video. So today we're going to dive into 10 really underrated classical music that will make you feel like you know everything about the classical music world. You'll be able to name drop some yeah. pieces that will earn you instant respect yes. from the classical community. This is a chance to flex your knowledge. Yeah. You walk into a console, you feel like, the third movement, the fourth phrase means this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, it was really hard to come up with this list because there's so much good music and there's also such a wide, wide range, range yeah. of like the most obscure classical music to like stuff that's still very popular within the classical world but just not mainstream, right? Yeah. So we try to balance it out. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mean these are the only ones. It's just, if you don't know these pieces, definitely check them out. Oh, amazing music. So right? nice. Number one, starting off, my favorite composer, Debussy. Not many people know, I mean, people do know this piece, but it's a slightly less well-known piece. Dance sac Sacre and Dance Profane. I don't know if I'm pronouncing yeah, it Yeah, I'll correctly. pronounce it right already. Dance Sacre e Dance et Profane. <laughs> For harp and strings, <laughs> yeah, which is a very interesting combination, but it sounds amazing. I'll play for you some of my favorite bits. So like peaceful. Welcome to mm. the world of the Debussy. Yeah. Dun, dun. That texture, kind of hazy texture is so Debussy, but I also find one of Debussy's signature compositional things is he would use parallel chords, mm -hmm. right? So before then, it was kind of like functional harmony. Like you had the melody and the harmony will serve to move the music from a harmonic sense, like tension, resolution, traveling between keys, right? Yes. But here, the chords are just moving in line with the melody. Yeah, that's like color thing. They broke the rules. His rules are like you can't write consecutive. Parallel fifths. Parallel fifths, parallel octaves. Yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to write it, but yeah. Debussy really made it happen. I just gotta show you that last bit. It's so epic, bro. Like. <laughs> I think I picked the wrong recording. <laughs> yeah, like, it's still epic, but my favorite recording, they played the last bit though. But no, yeah, it's still epic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not often you hear epic harp stuff. Just kidding, just kidding. Oh! Just kidding, now. Some harp representation. Yeah. What's next? So, Coffee for the Piano Gang. Piano Gang, I've been obsessed with this piece recently. I've been running to it, actually. It's pretty oh, epic. Nice. Because it's like. It's not super unknown like people in the classical world know it yeah. but it's not like moonlight sonata oh, moonlight, yeah, like, okay. you gotta check out this part it's crazy yeah this part's oh, messed yeah. up man and yuja wang is just like oh my oh, god she nailed it Can I say Prokofiev overall has got a very particular taste? He has a, uh, his uh, own uh, sound. Yeah, right? they're not, it's not something, for me anyway, it wasn't something I got into straight away. Prokofiev definitely has his own space in your heart, I'd say. I think taste is a good word. It's like yeah. if you're eating different foods, there's just this one particular taste that only Prokofiev has. Yeah, yeah. And no other composer has that music taste. I, I, I don't know what it is. It's a combination, I think, of his rhythm. He has always it's, this. 
pulse in his yes. music. Yeah. He has that kind of flavorful dissonance, but yet it's less like Shostakovich dissonance. It's more like fantasy and like yeah, it's not. I know what dissonance. you mean. It's yeah. not as harsh. Mm. And it's very hard. Like it's so hard. Yeah. What she did on the piano, I can imagine is insanely hard. But even the orchestral part, oh yeah, that part is hard. hard. Yeah. If you're playing accompanying Prokofiev concerto. Usually the orchestra has hard. Yeah, Prokofiev doesn't let you off the hook. Mm. You're, you're playing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Next one, some chamber music. Yeah, can I can I just say this? Theme comes back a lot. Mm. I got goosebumps. It's a bit like Prokop. It gets it's a bit weird at the beginning, mm -hmm. but I think this was actually one of the pieces that kind of got me to appreciate Britain. Mm. We we're meant to play together, but then I yeah. got injured in uni. So yeah, I remember. I right. Summer subbed out. Yeah, yeah. It's got a really particular feel to it, and it's actually written when he was late in his life. He took some parts of this from Bartok as well. Mm, I can I can hear you can, that. You can hear the bit. Yeah. Right? Da, 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 da. Like, that reminds me of Bartok. It's such an interesting use of the interval of the second. It's, it's like, such a dissonant, doo -doo, like it's not something you usually have so much in the listener's ears. Yeah. And then the way he kind of like inverts the melody without becoming a music theory lesson. I want to show what's that epic uh, solo bit. It, 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 it comes back, right? Oh, da, 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 yeah. Yeah, that solo is pretty good. And to be honest, I remember it was really hard to get the right colors as well. It's a string quartet, so it's more exposed. So you really want to get that color with just four instruments. In that part, I've noticed also a lot of parts, it's only two instruments. They could have easily gave the double stops to two instruments, yes. but they chose to keep it one. One for the viola yes. part. Yeah, viola skip to shine. Yeah. Yeah, Britain, English composer, I think, doesn't get as much cred as he should. His war requiem is also pretty epic. Oh yeah. Alright, so okay. we've had a piano concerto, a harp piece, a string quartet chair music, time for a symphony. Oh yes. If you already name drop Marla. You're the top 5%. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you already know yourself, but even amongst the famous Marla 9 symphonies, 10 if you want the incomplete one, there's a lot of internal debate about which one is the best, right? Mm -hmm. Some people love two, some people love five. I personally love number nine the most. One is also great. Seven, eight, a bit more indie. But number four, the one I'm talking about now, stands out because it's very different mm -hmm. from all his other symphonies. Usually Mahler's last movements are heavy and epic and so much orchestration. In this symphony, the last movement is really light, pastoral. It's like suddenly you're in the European countryside. Not very typical. Yeah, it's yeah. just very, it's unexpected, but it's amazing writing. He even ha puts a cowbell in yeah. the instrumentation. <laughs> like, it's to it's sound like there's cows in the background. Yeah. I'll play the fourth movement because, I mean, the whole thing's epic, but the fourth movement is probably the most iconic. <laughs> I think I'm gonna listen it's to it. It's so good. Eh? It's so nice. Marla somehow makes an orchestra sing. Mm. You know what I mean? Like a, it's an orchestra, but it sounds like all the instruments when they have their solos, they just sing the melodies, the yep. writing. There's also a part in here that the concertmaster has to tune the 
violin. Oh yeah, the, the contrabass plays two violins, yeah. Next one is another piano piece. I discovered this piece about like six months ago. Okay. And holy moly, like, it's Sibelius. And it sounded like Sibelius, but it wasn't something I'd expect Sibelius to write. Okay, where the hell? Like, where, where did this come from, right? It's like... Da, 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 da. You'd think with all the Sibelius symphonies and violin concertos, to hear something so simplistic that almost, it almost sounds like the precursor of like modern film piano music. Someone okay. had a theory. There was like a publishing crisis or some Some crisis happened to make money. The composers there had to write more music that people in their homes can play. Maybe this was like that. Sibelius I'll try to learn it. Yeah, and it doesn't look hard. Yeah, I mean, I mean to play it well. Play it was hard, but I'll, I'll try to learn it. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's only four minutes, a small piece. This to me could be like pop music, right? We got one last one from us and then three recommendations from our, just like our team actually. So yes. we'll go over that in a sec. Last one from us is Schumann Piano Quartet. romantic thing like oh. talk about romantic expression this is all there it's just In one pack like everything like yeah I don't know if you want to um, impress a potential lover hire a piano quartet and serenade them with this and they'll be a lot more impressed than Pachelbel canning yeah <laughs> this is a yeah. lot yeah so good check it out this recording obviously has Janine Argrich big legendary musicians. Mm -hmm. My ski playing the cello there. All right, three recommendations from our team, because we yes. also asked them. First one is from Jordan. He sent me this really interesting one. He said he's been listening to it recently. Kapustin. Kapustin. It's a I know. Russian composer who has a lot of jazz influence. I think I played something with Kapustin. Really? Yeah, it rings about doing um, my time with the Sydney Symphony. I didn't oh. know Kapustin existed. <laughs> I remember this name Kapustin, I was like, ooh, everyone, I was like, ooh, Kapustin, I was yeah. like, who's this? Ooh, Kapustin. Yeah, well, yeah, there you I go. I wonder. Sonata Fantasia, in the words of Jordan He, around 11 minutes, it sounds like anime, so I want to check it out. <laughs> something like this. Yeah. I, heard. Yes. I can't remember off the top of hand, something else sounded like this. That's so epic. And I was like, what's this going on off stream? I was like, this is so cool. Yeah, yeah. I would not expect this to be a Russian composer. Yeah, right? out of nowhere. Like, if I was blind listening to this, I would have thought it was a Japanese composer. Yep, same. Um, the rhythms, the melodies, the yep. harmonies. So Definitely cool, check out. out. Two from other team members. I don't know this piece, but it sounded epic. Hubert Parry, never heard of this composer, but it's an English composer.
I don't want to stop it. I'm like, it's stop nice. It. It's really nice. Um, that C sharp, like that. Oh, the harmonies that. I don't know. It's just. I think it's amazing. I feel like it's one of those pieces where I can imagine you're going through life and something big or impactful, terrible happened, and you're just like sitting by yourself in a forest, and then play this. It will so just be like this it, yeah. spiritual thing. Anyway, the last, last one. Yeah, just had to put two Debussy pieces in this list. <laughs> Debussy is superior. I mean, I don't know that much vocal works, but this piece, I love it. It's great. Yeah. This song, it's technically a song. The it song is, song is really nice. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's got the Debussy traits. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, there you go. 10 underrated classical pieces. Let us know if you enjoy this type of video. Uh, definitely, we think it's important to listen, to be able to hear and understand the tastes of every yeah, composer. Yeah, for sure. It's also we're trying to share this with you guys, so you guys get a chance to explore these type of music in the classical world. Happy listening. Happy listening. And if you want to play these pieces and songs, you have to practice. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.